Today we're going to be sort of Italian, right? We're going to do a lot of things with pasta sauces. How you don't have to spend a week making a pasta sauce and ransacking the, the spice shelf. Lots of people do that. That's not the way that it's done in Italy, where a lot of people cook very simple, very quick sauces when they come home from wherever they come home from, and they do it very, very quickly. So we're going to cook, right now, to start off with, we're going to cook two sauces which are total contrast in luxury. One is the simplest of all sauces, and this is absolutely lovely. It's called aglio olio, which means garlic and oil, and that's basically what it is. There's a couple other things in it, and I'll show you those. The other one is a very luxurious thing, which is sort of variation on something they call for Alfredo. And they you can buy it in a lot of fancy restaurants, Fettuccino Alfredo, and it's rich. So we'll do the both of them. Now what I'm going to do is turn the fry pans on, and you see what happens. Now, ayo oyo is not called ayo oyo because it's got every little garlic in it. It's got a lot of garlic on it, so I've chopped a lot of garlic. We're going to use two kinds of pasta for this. I'm just letting the pans get hot. We're going to use two kinds of pasta. We're going to use this is linguine, and we're going to use this one, which is rotini. It's called rotini because it goes round and round. It's like a screw. It's what it means. It's a little screw. Okay? Teeny means teeny. Teeny means small. You put it on the end of the thing. Spaghetti is one thing. Spaghettini is little spaghetti. So this is rotini. And there's great big ones of that made as well. But I put that on to cook, and I put on some pasta just a couple minutes ago because I wanted you to see that pasta will keep. If you're going to cook for a party, it's nice to get it right out of the pot, al dente. But if you've got panic, cook it until it's about 90% done, still chewy, then drain it off quick, put some oil in there, and just let the little bit of heat that's left in there, we'll, we'll cook it, okay? Now, here we are. We've got our two pans going. So we'll start off with the oyo, ayo, oyo. And we put in some oil. All right. Oil, because we're going to drink, we're going to eat this with the, the pasta. Nourishing. And what do we put in there? Garlic. How much garlic? How about that much? Is that enough? All right. That much will do. What else do we put in there? Parsley. About that much. And what else do we put in there? I bet you know by now we're going to put in anchovies. Now, you can put in one two, three, or four, or, well, let's put the whole can in there. All right, stir it all around over high heat and just let it turn into a sauce. The anchovies are going to melt and we're going to have a sauce. And the only thing we've got to watch here is that we don't have burned garlic. And garlic burns very quickly, so you keep your nose active and you just listen to it. You can smell it. You can smell it and listen to it at the same time. If you hear things starting to spit. But see how those anchovies... Look, I want you to see this. Look, see how those anchovies are just all melting away and disappearing. Well, that's all there is to it. The only other thing you've got to put in there is an awful lot of pepper. Now, you put in twice as much pepper as you've ever put in anything before. That's what I do. Now, some people put hot peppers in this. I've had it with hot peppers in in Naples, and I've had it with out hot peppers in it. I've also had it with a little bit of vinegar in, which is what I'm going to put in, just to give it a little bite. And there, all of a sudden, we have made ourselves a sauce. All right? It's starting to smell lovely, and we got it. 
Now, you want to see another one? All right. What we do here is even simpler. This is really simple. You get mustard. Now, you can use prepared mustard or you can use dry mustard. It doesn't matter. You put some mustard in a pan. You put a whole bunch of cream in there. And you let it bubble like crazy. All right. You put in a whole lot of cheddar cheese and you stir that around. You put in a lot, let's get this out of the way, of chopped green onions. You put green onions in because they cook quicker and they'll stay stiff. Okay, whole lot of green onions, like that. A little bit of parsley and a little bit of pepper and a little bit of what? Nutmeg, because nutmeg makes things taste, like cheese sauces taste wonderful. So there you are, you put a little bit, of, a little bit of nutmeg in there. Just grate it off, you can use a grater if you want to. But there you are, there's a bit of nutmeg. Put that in there and you have made yourself, I mean this is rich, this is, look at the color of it, this is just gorgeous. And there's no denying the fact that this is a rich one. All right, now we turn them both off and what you do, Make us some room here to see what you do is this. Make it pretty for you. Right, you take the pans over here and you take the pasta. This pasta we'll put with this one and the roti, whoops, that's a messy thing to do, isn't it? Come in there. And this one is rotini. I'm gonna put this in and we'll toss it right in the pan and we'll just turn it over and over. We're hoping that by replacing her knee, we will return her to normal function. Tonight at 8 on The Learning Channel. The skin is red. It's irritated. I had to scratch myself all the time. We're talking with people about Triple Action Gold Bond medicated powder. My powder right now is Gold Bond. I find it very soothing. I find it cool to the skin. Gold Bond's triple action is the absorbing action of powder, the medicating action of a proven itch fighter, and the drying action of zinc oxide. Gold Bond stopped the itch. There's nothing like it. Where I go, it goes. Try triple action Gold Bond medicated powder. Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from ski's top teaching pros. Found in this all new Ski Better Now video, yours free. Call this toll-free number today, and Ski Magazine will send you this video free with your paid subscription of only $11.94. Enjoy a full season of Ski Magazine, America's top-rated magazine for skiers. Beginner or expert, reach new levels of ability. Call today to get Ski Magazine, plus your free video, and Ski Better Now. Welcome back, dear and peasant. This is a pasta show. A few sauces that are dead easy and quick. Just get rid of all the idea that you have to spend hours in the kitchen making pasta sauce. We made a nice rich one, very sinful with cream and, and cheddar cheese. We made the simplest one of all with aglio olio. Now we're making a meat sauce. What I'm doing now is just stirring up the hamburger so that all the grains get separated. You can make this if you've got 20 people coming in a hurry, this is what you do. Fry up a bit of hamburger, like that. And you can do this if you want to with brown pork. And you dump in, let's put in the onions first. Put in some onions and stir them around in the meat. Heat up high all the time. Keep it really, really going, okay? Just keep the heat going. And you put in a little bit of olive oil, because a little bit of fat came out of the out of the meat, but we haven't got quite enough because we want it to be nice and rich and smooth. And oil goes together as a sort of emulsion with things. When it cooks with things, it, it's nicely cooked. It goes and makes it stick together. And we've got that going in. We want some garlic. You want garlic? Okay. Garlic. Right. And throw that around. No tomatoes. We've got a choice. We've got a choice of opening the cupboard and finding there's no tomatoes or opening the cupboard and finding there's a can. So we're going to use a can. Dump in about half a can of tomatoes and just let them 
come to terms with one another in the pot. Now, I told you there's oil in there, the juice out of the tomatoes, the juice out of the onions, it's all got the juice out of the meat. It's gonna make a sauce. We need some, we need some uh, seasoning in there. So we'll put oregano in. Oregano, rub it in your hands so it breaks up and all the nice flavors come out, okay? And that is going to turn into a sauce. Now, if you want to accelerate the cooking of this, you can put in a little bit of salt. Now, because you're sucking the juices out. I told you about that before. And you can put in a little bit of, lem of lime juice. Now, I like lime juice because it acts quicker. Let me cut this off. I missed that big one. Let me just cut that off. Now watch. Just give it a good old squeeze and keep a bit of lime juice back. But we'll use that in a minute. There we are. And if you want to put a little sugar in, you'll know whether it needs a little bit of sugar later on. And all you have to do with this now is let it cook. And the heat will look after the whole process. That's all there is to it. Keep the heat up high. And if you want to, put a little water in. Fine. If you want to put a little wine in, fine. If you want to put a little apple juice in, that's fine. Might just need a little bit of moisture, but you'll see that because see that moisture content in tomatoes varies, moisture content in meat varies, depends on where you are. Now that's a sauce which is going to cook, and we can't do anything to make it cook except let it cook. Now, what I want to do now is make you a really, really gorgeously simple one. I want to take some spring onions, because we had spring onions from the last segment of this show. And I'm going to take a tomato and just cut it up roughly into pieces. All right. This is just enough sauce for one or two. And this is really, really nice. You take the little whizzer and you just put in there some tomato and some green onion. Like that. And a little bit of parsley. Like that. A little bit more. Like that. And a little bit of this lime juice I was talking to you about. Okay? Now the reason I'm putting lime juice in here is because I want to get a little juiciness. And I also want to get a little bit of salt in it. Now all I gotta do with that is put the lid on take the whizzer. You can do this in a blender, you can do it in anything at all. And whiz it up. As soon as it starts to get smallish and turn into a sauce, we take a little bit of olive oil and put that in there because all, most of all Italian sauces have a little bit of oil in them. Like, but when we have butter on bread, we have oil in, in a sauce. All right, there it is. Now look, we got one sauce here that's ready to go. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of all this junk so that you can see. I'll just move it over there. Pretty plate, nice little bit of pasta, just for two, okay? Onto the plate, a little bit of nice sauce. Toss it with a fork. Dust a little bit of cheese on top. I feel much more comfortable now in a bathing suit. The muscles are much more clearly defined. No one exercise routine can do it all. That's why Buns of Steel introduces the Buns of Steel Collection. The Buns of Steel workouts are carefully designed to be the best and most effective for firm, sleek buns and thighs and tight, strong abs. They're really motivating and they're the kind of thing that you can do all the time. I lost two inches on my stomach and my waist. Here's what you get. Buns of Steel 3 and Abs of Steel for an amazingly low $29.95. Plus, if you call now, you'll get a free bonus. Legs of Steel. All three videos, a $60 value for only $29.95. Call now. They work for my thighs, my stomach, and you should see my buns. The Buns of Steel videos will do it for you, too. To order both videos plus free Legs of Steel, call 1-800-248-8882. Have your credit card ready or send check on money order for $29.95 plus $5.50. Shipping and handling to Buns Collection, P.O. Box 70, Department 50 Clinton, Tennessee. Call now. 
Tonight, the Learning Channel takes you inside the human brain. First, from the day we are born, is our destiny set? Why are men and women different? And can a predisposition be changed? We'll explore these questions on the sexual brain. Then, all of these pursuits, good and bad, have something in common. With each, we alter the mind's chemistry. Sometimes we go too far. Examine the addicted brain. Tonight, beginning at 9 on The Learning Channel. Welcome back. There's our 15-minute high heat meat sauce. Now, see how nice and chunky it is? See how nice and chunky and lumpy? It's not one of those desperately smooth ones. This is a really nice one. And it's ready to go. So all we got to do is find some pasta to go with it. So I like to mix it right in the pan. I'm going to take it over here and mix it in with this fettuccine. Just toss it. And I'll put a little bit left over there that I've got left over, and I can keep that for next week. You can make a soup out of it if you've got meat sauce left over. Just add a little bit of wine, and you add a little bit of... Um, and then I like to finish this off, watch, with just a few black olives. And all of a sudden, it looks gorgeous. So let's put this out on a plate. And there's supper. Well, that's an adequate supper for anybody in 20 minutes. And that's what you do. That's how you do it. I'll put that down there and let the dog have a go at it. All right? Fish that a little bit up there. Now, I want to show you something really nice. I want to show you something really, really nice, and I want to show you how to save some money. Everybody knows how to make pesto. You get Parmesan cheese, which you have to take a mortgage out to buy, and you get all kinds of pine nuts, and they're even more expensive. But I want to do it a different way, and you have to get fresh basil, or some say basil, or if you're Italian, you say basilico, okay? We're going to do it differently. This is Chinese parsley. It's cilantro, some people call it. And we just take this instead of basil or basil or basilico. We put it in the, in the blender or whatever you've got with some garlic, all right? And you put in some olive oil. Or if you use, you can use peanut oil if you like for this, because this is a different tasting one, all right? And we put in some cheese. Now, I'm not going to use Parmesan. I'm using Asiago. And if you go and ask for Asiago, A-S-I-A-G-O, you're doing what a lot of very bright Italian people do, because they don't want to spend a lot of money on Parmesan all the time, right? So in goes the cheese. And in goes the lid. And you just, whoops, whiz it. It doesn't take long. Let's just have a look. No, nope. needs a little bit more whizzing. And then, instead of putting in pine nuts, you put in walnuts. Now, walnuts are very cheap. And if you buy walnuts, buy them in the fall when they're fresh, no matter where you live. And, and if it's not going smooth enough, and you do this with pesto, get a little bit of water just a little bit, and that will turn it into a sauce. Look, so there you are. We take our nice bowl of rotini, get rid of the stalks, get rid of all those stalks that you guys can see, put that over there, and there we are with our pesto. Now, people make pesto out of different things. They make it out of spinach. I've had it made out of spinach in Naples. And you can make it out of walnuts, and you can make it out of any green leaf. You can even make it out of sorrel. And you just toss it. And if it's too thick, a little bit of pasta water to go with it, to go with. And there it is, and it starts to look nice. Dust a little bit over the top there. That's what you do. Explore the recipes and writings of James Barber by ordering your copy of the Urban Peasant Cookbook. James Barber's anecdotes and tips, together with his fast, simple, and affordable recipes, create much more than a cookbook. To receive your copy, send 1895 to The Urban Peasant, P.O. Box 2284, South Burlington, Vermont, 0540722284, or charge by phone. 
1-800-322-8321. We get lots of suggestions like this on how to help folks tell our Idaho potatoes from those others. Thanks, but we'll keep the seal on the bag. So look for it, because if it's not from Idaho, it's just a spud. We're hoping that by replacing her knee, we will return her to normal function. Knee replacement surgery on the operation, tonight at 8 on the Learning Channel. Welcome back. This is the pasta show, and we've made a whole bunch of things out of pasta. What I'm doing right now is peeling this inside pith of orange peel. I just took some pith off the orange peel and then you cut it into thin strips and you've got julienne orange peel. And we're going to use that for a sauce for this dessert. Now, the dessert I want to show you about, this dessert is great. I had a little bit of pasta left over, all right? And so I dumped it in the fry pan with a little bit of oil. Now, this is authentic. I've eaten this outside Florence and it's just great. And you can cook it in butter. I've had it in France, noodles cooked a different way. And you put it in the pan and you fry it. And then it goes crisp. Now watch. You flip it over and we can get the other side brown. Now we have to make a sauce to go with it. All right. Now make the sauce is dead easy. Take some honey, as much as you want, three or four, five tablespoons. Because if you're going to make a lot of pancakes, you make a lot of sauce, OK? And you put into the honey some orange peel. And then you put in the essential ingredient, some booze. Now, in Italy, they use grappa, which is made out of what's left over uh, when they've pressed the grapes and stuff. But I haven't got any grappa. I expect you have either. So I'm going to use a little bit of scotch. Nothing wrong with scotch and oranges and honey. So let's sweet things in there with the honey. Medium sweet with the orange peel. Now something sour, lemon juice. And we get all that complex build-up. And finally, oh, believe me, two shakes. You've heard of two shakes of lamb's tail. Well, this is two shakes of the cayenne pepper, the hot red pepper thing. So we've got a hot, sweet, sticky, nice sauce in there. And as soon as it comes up to the boil, just as soon as it comes up to the boil, you turn it off. Give it a stir so that everything gets blended. Right, and then you take your little pancake. And you can make lots of these, but they just look so pretty. And you take the sauce, and you drizzle a little bit of sauce all over it. And if you let them get cold, they're just fine. But if you don't let them get cold, and you eat them hot, then they're just fine too. What's best of all? is that you cook this pasta dinner, and then everybody sits around wondering whether you're going to have gatto santon or rey for dessert. Well, you don't have gatto santon or rey for dessert. You waltz in there with your pretty little plate of, of, of noodles, of fried noodles, and people look, and then they taste it. And that is when you rise to your greatest moment of glory, because they all say, that's great, what is it? And you tell them and they just don't believe you. They really don't believe you. So let's put a little bit more lemon juice on it just to make it, just to spark it up. And there we are. That's how you do it. That's the urban peasant. If you'd like these recipes, send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope to the urban peasant, Vancouver, British Columbia, postal code V6B4B2, post office box 5157. <laughs>